Hello and welcome to Field Journal. I'm Greg Yatman. With me on his channel is Andrew Vanage. Uh, we're continuing our series, our three-part series, Understanding CBRS versus Wi-Fi. Today, we're talking about mobility and handover. So uh, when speaking earlier with Andrew about this topic, the first thing that came to mind was things like um, client control handover versus infrastructure control handover. That's a big thing. Uh, and it's something that I don't have the expertise. Luckily, Andrew does. So with that, Andrew, would you dive in? Thanks, Greg. Yeah, one of the key differences to talk about between Wi-Fi and LTE and 5G when discussing this topic is the mobility and, and handover aspect. And there's some key differences that we want to discuss today in these technologies related to mobility. And you brought up the first one, which is um, probably one of the most important ones, which is in the Wi-Fi world, uh, handover between access points is client controlled uh, versus in the LTE and 5G space, primarily it's infrastructure controlled. And we'll get into why I say primarily because there are a couple of different options within uh, the cellular space for handover, but primarily the infrastructure controls that uh, client transition between the APs. And maybe just to take a step back, what, what we mean here is um, within a, a, a given network, how clients transition their data path, their application traffic flow from one access point to the next in order to ensure minimal disruption and latency to that application and that user experience on the device. This is becoming more and more critical for applications that require consistent um, controls for either user experience or for automation um, and low latency service for those applications that are much more demanding now. So uh, some of those um, really get into some key differences around, let's say, how fast those, those handovers can occur as well. So on that topic, and speaking of how fast, that's the question I have is really, what is that typical time frame uh, between them when you're looking at CBRS versus Wi-Fi? What does that handover look like? Yeah, so maybe we'll take each in turn. If we start with the Wi-Fi side, um, you know, an initial authentication, if we're doing 802.1x EAP authentication, um, can be hundreds of milliseconds. And that happens the first time that a client device joins the network. Luckily in Wi-Fi, there is a fast roaming or fast VSS transition uh, portion in the standard specification that is commonly referred to as 802.11r that allows for key caching and things of that nature so that subsequent handovers between access points don't need to do that full authentication. Uh, and that can be down in the sub 50 milliseconds type of time frame. Um, the downside is that uh, not all client devices support that portion of the, of the standard. It is an optional portion, along with a couple of related amendments called 802.11k and v that provide additional enhancements like neighbor measurement reporting uh, and directed handover from the access point. These are things that are in 802.11 standard. Unfortunately, uh, you know, only a subset of Wi-Fi client devices support them. It's very kind of hit or miss in, in the market at this time. Uh, some of the reasons why uh, Wi-Fi devices take potentially longer to, to hand over between access points is that client devices have to scan a large amount of channels. So having 25 plus channels in the Wi-Fi world um, and client devices don't necessarily know which one the access points are on nearby, they have to scan all of those and that can take a, a large amount of time. Um, so that's one of the reasons potentially why handover can be slowed down. Uh, another one can be that uh, you know the devices don't support that uh, 811R fast tran BSS transition. So they're gonna take hundreds of milliseconds all the time. And there's also this security versus performance trade-off in the Wi-Fi world. Um, unfortunately, you know, it, it is the case that a lot of times uh, enterprises decide to deploy um, key applications that require fast roaming with substandard security like pre-shared key or potentially 802.1x with a less secure EAP type like uh, password-based EAP. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, there's that trade-off of if you want to do high security with maybe certificate-based EAP, then that's a lot uh, harder to implement just from a complexity and ecosystem standpoint, having to deploy separate radius servers, PKI and certificate infrastructure and get all that working properly. It's, it can be a large um, hurdle for a lot of companies to tackle. So unfortunately, you find a lot of them going with the lower security variants just to make sure that those applications perform well and they're taking that risk uh, on the security side. Uh, if we transition, uh, just like the clients do, over to the LTE side for our conversation, uh, LTE is, is infrastructure controlled, like we mentioned. 
And really the handover time can be typically almost always sub 20 milliseconds for handover. Um, it's always using SIM-based authentication, so you don't have that security versus performance trade-off. And with 5G technology that's coming to market, they're actually targeting um, one to two millisecond handovers for client devices. Um, so that'd be, you know, really ultra low latency handover uh, as a client is mobile throughout the environment. Uh, some of the reasons that LTE and 5G can achieve these much uh, quicker handovers, uh, the first reason would be timing. Uh, all LTE and 5G access points are GPS time synced or through a network P2P master that distributes time to all of those uh, access points. And through the LTE scheduler, we actually have time synchronization with the client devices as well. So when all the devices are time synchronized, the infrastructure can very clearly communicate to the client devices exactly when they need to transition between uh, given access points and to which access point they need to, to make that handover to. Uh, from a, another standpoint as well, is that all of the measurement metrics that are communicated from a standards-based 3GPP um, process through measurement report mess messages. So the client and the infrastructure is always communicating about the signal quality of the current serving cell, as well as the signal quality for the neighboring cells. So the infrastructure really has all the information from both its own perspective, as well as the client perspective of which access point would be the best target for it to transition or hand over to. Um, and then there's coordination of state transfer behind the scenes between the LTE access points to prepare the, the new access point to take that client connection. So what we see is just in general, in the LTE and, and 5G world, uh, it's infrastructure controlled, very precise timing. Uh, the infrastructure is aware of all the metrics from both the infrastructure and the client perspective to trigger that, that handover between access points for the client device. And because of that timing, it, it you know the, the access point tells the client device exactly when to make that transition. Uh, whereas in the Wi-Fi world, it's kind of just more up in the air. Every client device is doing their own thing. Some of them do it well, some of them don't. Uh, a lot of the measurement reporting, a lot of the fast uh, roaming type of uh, specifications in the standard are optional. And we see very mixed uh, implementation of that within the client device ecosystem. And then, like we said, we had that security versus performance trade-off, which is unfortunately very prevalent. So um, that, that, those are some of the key differences for mobility and handover between Wi-Fi and cellular. Hopefully, this provides information for our audience. So, Greg, um, back over to you. All right. So what I took in from that is that when looking at CBRs in particular, you're talking about an increase in speed, uh, security, and also, um, um, I guess, the ease of, of transfer, or ease of handover. Is that right? Or is there something else I've missed there? Yeah, correct. I mean, I think that en encapsulates it pretty well. There's just not the trade-offs. There's just more standardization, less trade-offs to be had. And uh, because of the timing and, and just the way it's implemented, it's much more consistent, uh, uh, fast handover between uh, access points. All right, perfect. And speaking of fast, just for reference for someone like me who needs a point of reference for speeds, um, hundreds of milliseconds, I think one of the fastest a fastball can be thrown from the pitcher to the catcher in baseball is hundreds of milliseconds, uh, which seems like nothing. But when you extrapolate it out, tens of thousands, if not millions of connections, and it, it makes a difference versus, um, you know, five milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. That's the time it takes for a hummingbird or a, a honeybee to have a single flap of their wing. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, the difference between the two is stunning when you really ex expand it. Greg, you're, you're speaking to my heart. I'm a, a huge baseball fan. So, you know, you, you hit me right where it, right, right where it cares for me. So, um, you know, the other analogy that, that, you know, from a technical perspective to make is that um, the average packet delay budget between packets and a voice call is 20 milliseconds. So if you can target sub 20 milliseconds, you'll have flawless voice performance. And that's really what the target has been in the uh, cellular world for a long time. Obviously, voice being, um, you know, the, the first cellular application. 
Perfect. And that's the, exactly the level of detail I hope that we could uh, uncover here in this call, uh, in this meeting, in this uh, session. Um, for those of you who didn't catch the previous two, know that there's goodness there as well. So you'll have the trifecta uh, in understanding CBRS versus Wi-Fi. Please do check those out. Make sure you uh, like, subscribe, share uh, these episodes, and make sure that you're not a stranger to this program or to our website, where you can reach out to us or also to Andrew. Um, until the next time we see you or speak to you, we hope you're well. We wish you a happy 2021 and um, hope you have a great day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.